Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Commander Bharadwaj and we'll discuss the issue of the standoff in the Korean Peninsula, particularly the Armada which is supposed to be streaming towards Korea and also the attendant tensions. How do you see this? That this do you think there is a possibility of war now over the Korean Peninsula? I don't think there will be an immediate war at the moment because you know looking at the past uh, history uh, America never enters a place or never enters a country which has got nuclear weapons. It's its military requirement. It will first make sure that nuclear weapons are removed then enter that particular region. It did that to Saddam Hussein. It used the United Nations you know, resolutions to send their inspectors in Iraq and see to it that all nuclear, any traces of nuclear weapons were removed, if at all they were there. Even the chemical weapons were removed from Iraq before their military could move in. Their military would never take a chance of entering uh, a country which is known to have nuclear weapons. So America will do everything first to make sure that North Korea is denuclearized. It would be through sanctions, it will be through United Nations efforts, it will be by applying pressure on China. So it will do all sorts of things. So war is a little far away at the moment. It may happen at the later stages once uh, North Korea is absolutely denuclearized. But American military will never take a chance of moving into North Korea till the time it has nuclear weapons. You know, ever since the end of the Cold War, uh, America has used North Korea as a punching bag. Uh, in 1990s, much before uh, Bush Sr. actually went into Iraq, North Korea, you know, became a hot issue. Uh, you know, one was expecting that there could be a war. Uh, America could launch uh, missiles onto North Korea anytime. But somehow, they forgot North Korea for a little while and they shifted their attention to Iraq. This is 1990s George This is 1990s George Bush Sr. Of course, after that, uh, you know, uh, when uh, once uh, Clinton came in, uh, they, they, he had an agreement with North Korea to, you know, not f promote his nuclear program further. This is 1994. This is 1994 agreement. agreement which was there. But then, with Bush Senior coming in and Bush Junior uh, coming in, you know, again in 2002, then he included North Korea into the uh, axis of evil. Uh, so there again, the tension started building up. Then the North Korea again tested its nuclear, nuclear missiles in 2000, uh, it tested nuclear weapons in 2006, and then again in 2009. So the tensions were building up all this while. But the issue is that why is North Korea doing this? North Korea is doing this because it feels threatened. It feels threatened because after the First World War, after the, I'm sorry, after the Second World War, it was the first country which again U.S. concentrated upon. Yeah, the Korean War in 1952-1953. So, so there, it was bombed, heavily bombed. North Koreans had to face heavy bombing from Americans. It was something like uh, 6 lakhs 35,000 uh, uh, tons of bombs were dropped on North Koreans. Yeah, 635,000 tons yes. of bombs and a lot of it was napalm. They really burnt North Korea and it's estimated 20 to 30 percent uh, North Koreans died in this bombardment. That's the yes. figure. Americans have agreed it's 20 percent because that's a figure which uh, Curtis LeMay, yes. the chief of, joint chief of staff at some point, he had mentioned this figure. And that's a widely accepted figure. So that's a very, one out of five, that's a very, very high number. And ever since then, the North Koreans actually have not attacked any other country till now. It's an interesting point that you're raising that uh, North Korea is supposed to be mad, supposed to be unstable, supposed to be volatile, and it's having nuclear bombs. Well, Americans have all this while have had the right to bomb any country they want, invade any country they want. and. If you see the axis of evil list, they have actually invaded Iraq, Saddam Hussein, they have invaded Libya, killed Gaddafi, 
and North Korea is almost is al always very much on that list. You know, North Koreans are also afraid. One aspect is that they're afraid that Americans may attack them and, you know, bomb them to Stone Age, which they have been doing to other countries. Their other aspect is that, uh, you know, uh, once they're being asked to denuclearize, they feel that once they denuclearize, the Americans are going to come back with much more, uh, you know, venom on them, just as they did against Gaddafi. You know, they, they lured Gaddafi into giving up his nuclear program. First, they imposed sanctions on Gaddafi, and then they said, if you give up your nuclear program, then we are going to remove the sanctions. Gaddafi got lured into the game. Then they invited him to G8 summit in 2009, shook hands with him. He gave up his nuclear programs. But after two years, what happened to Gaddafi and what happened to Libya? The whole nation was destroyed. Gaddafi, of course, was you know uh, killed to pieces. So similar thing they did against uh, Saddam Hussein. But do you still think there is a possibility of the Russians, the Chinese, and the Americans clashing over Korea as it happened in 1950? Uh, you are talking about uh, we are talking about the the uh, aircraft carrier, uh, also other forces which are moving in from the American side. So how do you look at this formations which is coming into the Korean Peninsula or at least in the sea? You know one. Uh, one change which has occurred uh, since the, uh, you know, um, uh, since the Russians entered Syria recently has been that American hegemony is starting to be challenged at some levels. Although Americans are moving into the Korean Peninsula with their aircraft carrier, carrier and also with, uh, you know, today's uh, news reports suggest that their nuclear submarine Michigan is also moving into the peninsula. So they have their entire navy over there. But now the Russians and the Chinese navy are also pretty large to challenge the Americans. And the Russians are no longer sitting in their backyard. They have started coming out now and challenging them. The LK Korean Peninsula is Russian backyard. Yes. Vladivostok is pretty close pretty to the North Korean to. border. Yes. So they have also started putting their ground troops there now, fearing that if the situation escalates. The other aspect is that, you know, why America has been uh, doing all these things, uh, largely because the international community, uh, you know, which speaks against these issues, uh, which largely comes from the European Union. Uh, you know, no, I'm not talking of Britain, which is already out, and it would never have done that. But larger European Union, which have been championing human rights issues, it has never raised the you know violation of human rights by American forces. Uh, for some reason, because of their elite networks, which work within in the transatlantic world. Well, in the France itself has invaded various countries in uh, Africa, and it has never raised human rights violations over there. They have never raised human rights violation vis-a-vis -vis Saudi Arabia, what is doing it in Yemen. So their human rights have been extremely, shall we say, self-centered. It only for their benefit, not otherwise. And it is very selective. And now, you know, now with the growing, uh, growing right-wing movement, ideological movements, I would say, uh, you will see more and more of, uh, you know, support that America would gather for its action. But well, let's come back to Korea. North Korea is a nuclear power today. It's probably something like anything between 25 to 30, could be even up to 40 uh, nuclear bombs. It has missiles. It cannot hit the United States, but it certainly can hit Japan and South Korea. Seoul is within the artillery range of North Korean cannons. It's only 50 kilometers, so that's within range. This is a disaster for the peninsula and Japan if the war breaks out over there. Do you think that the Americans are not aware of the fact or do you think that it still would like to do brinkmanship or this is uh, Trump's flexing of muscles believing that North Korea will back down and uh, therefore he will have won a quote unquote huge victory? You know, a lot, one, uh, one looks at it, uh, you know, from nationalistic point of views. Uh, of the South Koreans and of the Japanese, one is intrigued 
Japan has been the victim of American nuclear bombing. Yet one does not see, you know, that kind of a resistance against American moves to nuclearize the whole region, to further nuclearize the region. Similarly, South Koreans, you know, if at all, if the North Koreans get attacked, then the attack is actually going to be on their people with whom they have uh, family ties. So why should it happen that they go in to support the American agenda in the region, which is an extra regional, extra territorial power in that region. Now, this actually is explained a lot by the kind of networks, the elite networks which America has been able to form with all these countries. Now, these elite networks are the ones which control the media over there. These elite networks control the business and also they have a large presence within their military establishments. Now, once these elite networks are able to serve not their own national interest, but the interests of the American strategic aims in the region, then the problem actually starts. So, somewhere down the line, these elite networks till the time they are broken, the world will continue to witness the same kind of mayhem which we have been witnessing you know, for the last hundred years, ever since the first world war. This entire violence, you know, has been going unabated. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Be with us for future episodes of News Click.